All right, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a Chelsea news video. Well, I'll be talking about two subjects today. Well, actually, it's one subject and also I'd like to cite an article published by The Standard regarding Chelsea Football Club, Frank Lampard and transfers, his disappointments from this January window and what he's been promised moving into next summer. I also want to talk about the hot topic at Stamford Bridge at the moment and that's goalkeeper Keparitha Balaga. How apparently he's come out and said he was shocked at Frank Lampard's choice to uh, drop him. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Before we get into it, a quick reminder to you guys there to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so. Please do sub, hit the bell notifications icon because that apparently is important. Why not like this video, help a brother out and follow me on Instagram to hit me up on the Instagram lives. All right, let's get into it. Right then, let's start with the leaky Spaniard in goal. Now, I'm by no means a Kepa hater as a Chelsea fan, but I'm sure you've all seen the published statistics of how he's like, I don't know, 128th out of 130 keepers in around the top five leagues in Europe. Basically, he's in a really bad run of form, a really poor moment for him. I've seen him do good things as a goalkeeper, but this is really, really bad. I think everyone accepted the decision from Frank Lampard to drop him. A lot of people were probably thinking, maybe asking for it to come sooner, but he did the right thing in doing so. Apparently a source close to Kepa told a British news publication that Kepa was actually shocked that he was dropped from the Chelsea squad for that big game against Leicester away from home. Now, I don't think everyone else in the footballing world was shocked, but apparently he was. Now, Chelsea understandably don't want to lose their investment or don't want to waste money like I mean, to be honest, it kind of looks like they've wasted a bit of money on Kepa, but they don't want to make even further losses, and they want Frank Lampard to stick with the young Spaniard, and apparently Kepa himself wants to stay and fight for his place, which is good. He seems like quite a headstrong character with a lot of self-belief. I think that served him well and badly throughout his Chelsea tenure, see the cup final last season. But apparently it's been quoted that Frank Lampard has seen enough. Now, this could seem harsh from the Chelsea manager, but really, Look at the numbers, he's literally, a lot of people think he's the worst goalkeeper in the Premier League. I don't think that because of his ability, certainly his form is the worst in the Premier League at the moment. And it's just costing Chelsea points, he's not making saves he needs to make. He may come back in the team, Frank Lampard might reintroduce him, he might find some form, knuckle down, and everything works out fine, and this was just an important, pivotal part of the Kepa story at Chelsea, but interestingly, Atletico Bilbao, the team he came from that made 72, whatever it was, 71 million pounds on him, they're keeping tabs on him. They're probably looking to bring him back, apparently. Now imagine, they'll probably go to Chelsea. Look, he's the worst, apparently. We'll give you 30 million for him and they would have made a mental profit on him. I don't, to be honest, I don't see Chelsea taking the L that badly in terms of a loss, but there is a suitor, there is a buyer out there if they really do want to just cut their losses. To end this story, I want to say he might not, everything might work out okay with Kepa, although all the noises are Frank Lampard is absolutely not happy with him and he's seen enough. He might come back into the team, make some big saves, and everything turns out fine. Perhaps there is a sort of personality clash between the goalkeeper and the manager that's yet to be seen, really. And obviously stories have come up that Frank Lampard wants Nick Pope to be a long-term replacement for Kepa. I think the rest of the season is an audition for Kepa to keep his place at Chelsea. We'll have to see. Right, you know what I like to do in these Chelsea news videos? I go through the swamp that is the internet and I like to try and consolidate and find some information on Chelsea that I find interesting, put it together and present it to you. But I want to read you some quotes from the uh, article published by The Standard about Chelsea, Frank Lampard, the board and players. Here it is. Chelsea are preparing to hand Frank Lampard a summer War chest, don't you just love that term? In excess of 150 million pounds, we've heard that figure before, to offset his disappointment at the club's failure to sign players in January. They are basically saying, sorry you didn't get your players, you know, you really wanted them. Here's loads of money in the summer. The Blues head coach was visibly frustrated on deadline day as they were unable to bolster their attacking options, despite Lampard making it clear they needed a striker to ease the burden on Tammy Abraham. Yes, indeed, Frank Lampard was sitting there and he was angry. 
without me swearing. <laughs> a recap on the narrative, Chelsea explored deals for a number of short-term options including Paris Saint-Germain's Edison de Cavani and Dries Mertens of Napoli before deciding to wait for their top targets to become available. Now that's true, I also think Chelsea did try and get a couple of things over the line towards the end and on deadline day, but it didn't come off. Standard Sport understands Leon forward Moussa Dembele is currently their preferred centre forward signing. The league earned sign were unwilling to do business last month, but Dembele is expected to become available this summer. Now that's interesting, I genuinely think Moussa Dembele is Chelsea's number one striker target, alongside someone like Jadon Sancho to spill all the cash on. Not so much Timo Werner, I see him fluttering his eyelashes at Liverpool at the moment. It's unclear at this early stage what price Leon would demand for their 23 year old, but it's likely to command in excess of 60 million pounds. I mean, Chelsea bid 30, 35 million. How's that suddenly gone to 60 million pounds? I mean, maybe if he scores another 10, 15 goals, maybe. That would be mental though. If he gets 25 league earned goals, then fine. But that's crazy, man. Ah, here it is. Another shortlisted player, Timo Werner, admitted on Monday he would be interested in a move to England. And it quotes, I am open for everything, said the 23-year-old Leipzig striker. I was in America for a holiday recently and English football was on all the time. That's an exclamation mark for the Premier League. But there are also big famous clubs and it would clearly be fun playing there. Basically saying the Premier League's good, I guess. Werner scored 25 goals and 28 appearances this season. Ridiculous. And also has attracted interest from Manchester United and Liverpool. But the way he's been talking about clubs that are favourites to win the Champions League that he's interested in, let's be real, that's Liverpool and I can really see him just going to Liverpool. For the, for the amount of money he'd cost, that kind of money I think Chelsea would prioritise on Jade and Sancho. Let's talk about wingers. Chelsea will also be in the market for a winger, as Pedro is expected to depart on a free transfer when his contract expires in June. Willian is in the same situation, and although the Blues are hopeful of agreeing an extension, talks reached an impasse some time ago over the length of a new contract, with the 31-year-old Brazilian seeking a minimum of a two-year deal and a significant wage increase on his 110k a week wage. Significant? Yeah, I guess so. Let's be honest, someone like Willian, the amount of time he's played in the Premier League, Kante's on 290k a week, you'd expect him to be on at least, well, around double, I guess, on a one-year extension, but, you know, Chelsea don't like giving two-year extensions. At his age, I don't know, it's a bit of a weird one, really. Right, here it is. The Blues hold a serious interest in Jadon Sancho, whose return to England is anticipated for this summer as he continues his fine form for Borussia Dortmund. The 19-year-old is valued in, ex in excess of 100 million and a prominent showing for England at Euro 2020 could see his asking price soar. Now, if you haven't watched it, go watch my video on Jadon Sancho, which is my previous upload. I spent a lot of time doing a deep dive into his statistics for this season and speculating where he could go in the summer and how much he'd cost etc go check out my previous upload after this of course Chelsea are not off put by that valuation although they will face competition from Manchester City can't see him going back there and United for his signature can't really see him going to Manchester United unless they get Champions League Crystal Palace is Wilfried Zaha and Ajax is Hakim Ziyech are among several other wide options being looked at. Out of those two, I'm sure you'd all agree, Hakim Ziyech is the better option. Lampard is believed to have been given assurances that he will be backed in the summer after expecting additions to the squad last month, a development which would have enabled Olivier Giroud to depart. So yeah, apparently assurances. Well, you'd need assurances. He's been at the club, he would have been at the club for a year with not one signing. I mean, it's Chelsea. Lampard's irritation at missing out led him to declare Chelsea as underdogs for a top four finish prior to traveling to Leicester at the beginning of the weekend, which ended their lead over fifth place. Which ended their lead over fifth place? I think that means shortened. Yeah, as a result of Tottenham's 2-0 win over City. I mean, who the hell saw that coming? Giroud was left out because of a lot of scrutiny has been on him, and Lampard faces a difficult task reintegrating the Frenchman who is desperate for game time ahead of Euro 2020. I think it's quite smart, the whole underdog thing about Lampard. He needs to regain that mentality, and he's of that sort of Jose Mourinho era, everyone versus us, we are underdogs. I think that sort of mentality might suit him well, but to be honest, he's probably right about underdogs. Everyone around Chelsea who's going for that fourth spot have strengthened and Chelsea have like a glaring weakness that they have not strengthened. So I kind of get the whole underdogs thing. So 
it's interesting. That kind of article consolidates the situation at Chelsea at the moment, and most interestingly, Moussa Dembele being Chelsea's number one target. I think that kind of makes sense, but Tammy Abraham will have to knuckle down and really prove his worth as Chelsea's number one striker up until the summer in that case, maybe get 20 goals or over. Because someone comes in for 60 million pounds, that will be a record fee for a forward for Chelsea. Do you know what I mean? So that's a big statement. Of course, until if they do actually sign Jadon Sancho for over like 100 million, 120 million, that will of course be just a record fee for the club. It's certainly interesting. I would imagine the club have offered Frank Lampard assurances for the summer probably assurances that actually lie in the balance of him getting top four which would be so infuriating for the Chelsea coach because he wanted reinforcements to ensure he does get top four so then they could attract big summer signings but they're probably like yeah don't worry about the Lampard you'll get 150 million provided you reach top four which obviously yeah like I said it's got to be infuriating for the coach I'm speculating that situation but knowing Chelsea Football Club you could probably see that being the case do you know what I mean but what do I think I do actually think to be honest genuinely if Chelsea reach Champions League I actually think they will sign Jadon Sancho I know that's like a big big statement and he's an absolute superstar again I want to cite my video I uploaded earlier go check it out he is an absolute European superstar and it would be a huge statement if Chelsea pulled off that signing but I genuinely could see him signing for Chelsea if Pedro goes maybe even Willian you know I just see it happening he wants Champions League football he's a Chelsea fan his mates play at Chelsea he looked up to Lampard growing up it just seems like a good move for him it's a little bit risky because Sancho could absolutely sign for a club that is guaranteed titles of course you could look at the sort of profile of player that he is Chelsea don't guarantee titles they might guarantee a star attractive football ambition good pay but if, you know and he might be young enough to go all right I'll do that with Chelsea for a few years if it doesn't pay off I'm off to Real Madrid mate <laughs> you know what I mean but um he could go straight to Real Madrid, Barcelona, Liverpool, City. He could go back to City if he fancied it. He could go to Liverpool, win like Premier Leagues, Champions Leagues. Do you know what I mean? Um, say what you want about the Liverpool fan base. They're very, as a Chelsea fan, but they're a great fan base. They follow their team. They, they love their players. There's, um, there's history there. So there is an attractiveness to, to, to Man United as well for that. You know, if they do get fourth and Chelsea drop out, he could just go to Manchester United. So it's all up in the air still, and we'll have to see what happens regarding that. Anyway, I'm rambling on. I want to get your thoughts and opinions on these transfers, on the story of Frank Lampard, on Kepa Aretha Balaga. What's happening there? What would you do? Get down in the comment section below, express your thoughts and opinions, and I'll be down there checking it out. If you've enjoyed the content today, guys, please do like the video. And remember to subscribe if you are indeed new to the channel follow me on social media at football yannick on instagram and twitter and that's it from me guys so you lot enjoy the football and i will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outlined in chuck in my life seen trouble hustle on the double silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle yo chick like to guzzle bad boy stay in trouble i only love this paper sorry i don't i love me baby